Everything Grows by Ali Staub. Everything grows. Chickens, families, your hair. This year I saw three things grow right in front of my eyes. The first thing was plants. At the beginning of this year, all I knew about plants was that they needed sun, water, and soil to grow. So that's what I gave them. I saw tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants grow in the fall. I saw cabbages thrive through the winter. And I saw peas shoot towards the sky and radishes be uncovered in the spring. From seed to sprout to an adult plant that flowers and fruits, it was amazing to see that with the right support and resources, these seeds could become something so beautiful and develop produce to help the community. The second thing was my students. In the fall, 60% of the students in one of my classes had never tried a radish. Now they have planted, pickled, and tried a radish. They've sipped on kale smoothies, designed their dream salad bar, and voted for their favorite fruits and vegetables during Munch Madness. Sometimes they were excited and sometimes they were afraid, but they were always willing to try things. When doing the Agents of Change lesson with my fourth graders, it was amazing to see them get so invested in issues like single-use plastics and food waste. They were face to face with these issues every day, but once they were taught to step back and look at their system, they saw how their actions and their school's actions impacted the world. But what could they do? They are just kids. But they grew to understand they were community members, and they can have a say in how things are run. I was amazed by the letters to the principal, letters to parents, posters, petitions, and commercials these 9 and 10 year olds were able to produce about recycling, composting, and reusable packaging and water bottles. They found their voice and found a way to express it to their community. I also did a learning from your elders unit with my fourth graders, which required them to interview anyone they considered to be an elder about their relationship with food. They asked things like, what's your favorite dish, least favorite dish, how did you learn how to cook, and what is your favorite food memory? Many of them chose to interview older family members, and with simple questions were able to uncrack great stories of their family's culture and history. The students were able to share with me and each other their family's personal experiences with food, and we all grew from hearing different traditions from places like Venezuela, Poland, Honduras, Africa, Italy, and Ecuador. They expanded their global knowledge and their relationships by speaking with their elders and sharing their stories with their classmates. The final thing that grew this year was me. I have been a student my whole life. In May 2019, I graduated from college and thought it was time to stop being a student and start applying all I had learned. Food Corps trains us in the importance of hands-on learning for the students, but my service year led to a lot of hands-on learning experiences for myself as well. The schools, the community, and some of the roles I took on this year were new to me. I constantly had questions popping into my head, but now I know every uncertainty I had could be resolved by the understanding that I will learn by doing. How do you learn how to run a school garden? You go out, you plant some seeds and seedlings, and you water and weed your heart out. You watch tomatoes and peppers pop up while your kale gets munched on by little critters and your swish charge shrivels up and is never to be seen again. How do you help create a successful cafeteria? You work in the kitchen with the cafeteria staff. You sit with the students at lunch and you meet with the menu planners. You experience every angle of the cafeteria. Once you've lived through each point of view, you will discover what is needed for success and how to do it. How do you cook with 20 elementary school kids? You go into seven classes in two weeks and say, hey, we're making applesauce today. By the end, you will gain the confidence needed for cooking in the classroom. And you will have mastered the art of applesauce making and can probably open your own side business. 
How do you fight for food justice? You listen to students' stories, learn their traditions, and incorporate them into lessons. You speak to parents and share bilingual recipes to open up access to healthy eating at home. You ask the students what their dream lunch would be. You bring vegetables into class they have never tried before and watch it become their new favorite food. You will learn by doing. You may not know what you're doing and you may fail, but that is how you learn. I grew this year from being a hands-on food core service member. I will always be a student, even when I'm a teacher. I will grow as students grow, as plants grow, because everything grows.